Hello, in this video we're going to use uh, x-intercepts and y-intercepts to um, uh, determine uh, the break-even point and uh, uh, profit uh, and initial startup costs from a uh, function that describes uh, profit as a function of the number of items that are sold. So let me draw a picture here and uh, this is going to be profit. And we're going to say number items sold on the x-axis. And uh, we're just going to, I'm going to draw a curve here. Uh, we're going to do this and that. Okay. And this is going to be uh, 10 items, 20 items. 30 items and uh, <clears throat> and this is going to be uh, negative 10 right there uh, and so we'll do a profit in uh, thousand thousands of dollars this would be the number of items sold um, just you know how many uh, it could be anything uh, and I just want to talk to this graph um, there's there's four interesting points. There's three x-intercepts, and there's a y-intercept here. And um, the y-intercept uh, is something that we haven't dealt with a whole lot, but it, it holds a lot of uh, information for us. The y-intercept right here is the point zero negative ten, and a y-intercept is a point that you get when x is zero. So what you can take from this y-intercept is that if you don't sell any items at all, then you're going to lose negative 10 uh, in thousands of dollars. So what that tells me that if you don't sell any items and you lose $10,000 in this graph, uh, $10,000 is your startup costs. You know, when you produce an item, you have to buy machines, hire workers, buy materials, set up everything that you need to go to start making an item. And if you don't sell any, then you lose that setup cost. So here it tells me my profit if I if I sell zero is a negative ten thousand dollars. So that's an that's um, uh, the the y-intercept is just what y is if x is zero. Um, you can see that my profit starts to increase as I sell more items. That's not surprising. Uh, once I get to ten sold. I'm at a break even because at 10 you can see my profit is uh, is zero. That's 10 comma zero. So if I set up the factory, sell 10 items, and stop, then I don't lose money and I don't make money. The profit goes up, it hits a peak, and then it starts to go down. Uh, and you can see 20 is another break even point. You know, I don't know why that is. Maybe I got to about here and I had to start buying more material or hiring more workers. Um, and once I get to 20 items, uh, I, uh, I'm i back at a break-even point. I've My cash in and cash out is equal, so I've not lost money, not made money. Uh, now I'm going to a loss. This Now this is kind of a, a, a dark area. Uh, between 20 and 30, if I sell between 20 and 30 items, I'm selling at a loss. I'm losing money. That's not what we want to see. You know, why is that? You know, again, it depends on the item. But I'm just reading the chart and taking the information from the chart. Once I get back to 30, uh, I break even again, don't lose, don't make. And after 30, things are looking super. Uh, the profit goes up the more items that I sell. And it presumably, just the more I, I sell, the more profit I make here. So um, that's how you read a chart and determine in English, uh, in this case, how many items you sell to break even, either 10 or 20 or 30. What is your startup cost? Negative ten thousand dollars. And uh, uh, once you get past thirty items, it appears that the more you sell, the more profit you make. Um, so that's just a way to use your x and y intercepts um, to determine that. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about y intercepts. Uh, if you have just a fun, let's just move this up now. Uh, if you have just a function, say x squared. Uh, minus three. Um, your graph is going to look like this. 
the vertex is shifted down. Kind of like that. And uh, this point, negative three, zero, negative three, that's the y-intercept. The way you find a y-intercept, find y-intercept is plug zero in for x, plug in x equals zero. So here, if you plug in zero for x, you get zero squared minus three. My y-intercept is negative three, you can see that. Uh, sometimes these are more complicated. So let's look at, at one of those. Say you have y equals x cubed minus x squared plus 2x plus 5. Now, I don't know what the graph looks like. I can guess what it might look like. But you don't need a graph to know the y-intercept. You know, for x-intercepts, we had to factor and, you know, find the zeros, sometimes graph it on the calculator. Y-intercepts are actually much more simple because all you do is you plug in zero and you get basically everything is zero except this last point, which is five. And you can see now that the y-intercept is five. I'll just point zero comma five as my point out there. And this is a cube. I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm just going to kind of guess maybe something like that. Uh, so you can see that goes to the point 0, 0,5. So uh, if you need a y-intercept, all you have to do, plug in 0 everywhere you see an x, and then whatever you get left uh, remaining uh, will be uh, your y-intercept.